It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, folks. Today we are taking a look at The Village Crone. The Village Crone here is a game in which all the players are witches and you are uh, going around casting spells, messing with villagers, basically trying to uh, get the most victory points and be the best witch around. Let me show you an overview of how the game works. I'm not going to go into every little detail, but I'll give you enough to understand how the game operates. And then I'll tell you what I think of this one. Here we go. So here's what the game might look like set up and ready to begin. This is actually all modular, so you can set these up however you want to, and it doesn't even it doesn't even have to make this shape. You can do uh, a funky shape if you'd like, as the manual here shows you. Let me see if you can pick that up here. You can do uh, funky little shapes. You can you can do this however you want to. So I'm just going to be showing you the simplest thing I could do on the table. Each player is going to um, to take one of these spell books which looks like that, and it's basically a screen with a cheat sheet in there. And so you got a spell book, you got all of your familiars, in this case the snakes, and so these tokens here, you get all of those. And then you also are going to get one spell of each level, there are three levels of spells, they look like this. And so everybody would get a one spell, everybody gets a two spell, and everybody gets a three spell, and so this would be my starting hand of cards. And then to finish setting up, we have put out all the decks and all the characters where they go. And uh, we are going to put out some familiars and draw some cards from these piles on the table where you have the, uh, you know, the silver and the fire and the soil. And so going around the table, you put out a familiar and draw two cards from that pile into your hand. We go around the table twice doing that, and so the next one I might put here, let's say, and draw two cards from that pile. And then lastly, you put one in the village green. So everybody will have one there. And so let's say we are playing with, uh, let's say we're playing with three players, and so we're putting these out. And we are, uh, the other players have put theirs, let's say someone put here and here, and, uh, the other player put one here and here. Okay, so that's how that works. And then you are ready to begin. The game is going to uh, continue until someone has 13 points, and then that witch is the winner of the game. And throughout the game, you are simply casting spells, uh, gathering ingredients, and basically messing with the lives of all these poor people. On your turn, you are going to... Uh, the first thing that happens is tithe here, in which every every witch, no matter the order, is going to discard one ingredient of their choice to the tithe barn here. And uh, the only re the only way you don't do that is if you played if you have a familiar there, then you don't do uh, you don't pay uh, tithe. After that, starting from the start, uh, witch, which is the player who has the broom here then you are going to take your turn. You're going to move and cast spells. Every witch has uh, six movement points, which you can split up however you want to among the uh, villagers and among your familiars. And so let's say again green. I could do one, two, three, four, five, six. Whatever. I can split that up however I'd like. And then I can also cast spells mixed in there. I can split that up however I choose. I can move twice, cast a spell, move some more, cast another spell, whatever you want to do. Once that's all done, then we are going to the harvest phase in which uh, every witch that has uh, moved and cast, you know, everybody's moved, everybody's cast spells, and every witch is going to draw two ingredients from every location that has their familiar. And so you are, the harvest is getting more of these cards. And then finally, you move the broom around to the next player, and you continue. Again, 13 points in spells is the winner of the game. Uh, let me show you what the back of one of these looks like. But there is actually quite a bit of information on it, so let's uh, zoom in on that. 
So there you have all your possible spells by name. They tell you what they do. They tell you the ingredients that you need. And then the incantation that you must say out loud. Um, according to the rule book anyway. Uh, or you can make up your own. It says you can make up your own incantation. And so as you can see, these are going to do things like basically manipulate everything on the board. They are going to let you move villagers to another position and join their fate with love. Love is a token that you are going to use to attach to two villagers and they are going to be linked. And so, you know, you basically do this with two villagers and, uh, you know, they're stuck together. So if one moves, the other moves. That's the idea. So that's love. You can summon a villager or anyone familiar to, uh, to any location. You can do a transformation. The fortune lets you draw any three cards from the tithe barn and add them to your hand. You can do the binding, which is going to lock down a location so nothing can leave, nothing can enter. Lots of different things, but they're all basically, again, manipulation-based. Uh, moving the stuff on the board to make it do what you want to do. Now, why do you want to do this? Because of the spells, of course. And on your turn, you can uh, move, you can cast these or you can cash these in, basically, if you've completed them. And so they will let you know how they are accomplished, and the ones are a single point, the twos are two points, and the threes are three points. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of them here. That's basically it. Uh, the idea is you are going to be playing these, and scoring them, and trying to get to 13, before anybody else does, and obviously, as you can see, the threes are considerably harder than the twos, which are harder than the ones. The game also includes, as you can see here, uh, alternate rules, if you want to use those, quite a few alternate rules, and solitaire play rules, which you can use as well if you want to play alone. It's quite simply, uh, you know, you, got, you have to get to 13 points before uh, ingredients, specific ingredients run out. So you can do that as well. And um, there's a lot of, throughout the rules, which, you know, these alternate rules might lead you to, to understand, lots of little rules that are exceptions to other things. So, or if this person moves, then it takes so-and-so with them, unless they're a frog. And if they're a frog, then if the space gets filled, normally the character who lives there jumps back, everybody else is dispersed, but not if the space is bound. And if it's bound, then it has one of these around it. And so, you know, it would be like if, you know, if these two characters, let's say these two characters are in love, and uh, then I bind them, then you take this thing and put it around them, and so all these little rules of, as, as you know, ways to break the rules and bend the rules are, are uh, exceptions to everything that's written. The manual is, is well written, but there are a lot of exceptions. But basically, that's it. That's the game. You are manipulating all of this stuff on the board. You are picking the little characters up and moving them, picking up your little familiars and moving them, trying to get to 13 points, and if you do so, you're the winner of the game. I had high hopes for the Village Crow, and I really liked the look. I thought the theme was funny, and, and it seemed like a like a fun theme. But um, right away, when I saw the board, I was not very impressed. It looks uh, very plain, you know. It's 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 uh, you know all the green squares, and it's basically um, you know you pick it up and move. It's not a roll and move, but you do have six steps. It's like you roll a six every time, so it's almost a roll and move. And uh, so right there, I wasn't too impressed with that. And the the game overall, I uh, found to be sort of pedantic, a little bit boring. It just did not impress me. I guess the big issue I have with it is that to me, the game feels like, and this is the best comparison I can come up with, it feels like fetch quests in role-playing game, video games. Um, I, you know, everybody, every game has fetch quests where you are told go and bring back eight bear pelts or whatever right and so you walk out there and you grab your bear pelt and you walk back and you give them to some person and then you get something that lets you do cooler better quests 
this is like the fetch quest where it is its own is its own reward. That is it. That you know you went and you got the bear pelt and you came back and you won. That's that's the whole game. And so to me, it felt like a bunch of little fetch quests where you just have to line up the dominoes and then you knock them down and that's some points. You play points and that's it. And so it just did not appeal to me, that style of play, that style of, um, it's not combo building, it's more like circumstance building. You know, you are just making sure that the situation on the board applies to the card you're holding and you go, ha I have achieved it or somebody did it for you. You know, that happens sometimes too. Uh, and so I just did not find the game play very engaging, unfortunately. Cool theme. Good production values. I do like the way they uh, they went through the trouble of making the little hearts attached to the people. And the binding rings. You actually put a ring around whatever you are binding. I like that. But the game itself did not grab me. I did not find it very engaging. So unfortunately, this would be a pass for me. That is the Village Chrome. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.